Welcome to the second demo section of this event. I'm Andreas Rosberg. I'm the technical lead of the languages team at Definity. I also happen to be one of the co-designers of WebAssembly, so that's probably where I want to start off with a few words on that um, in my little presentation here. So WebAssembly, in case you're not familiar with it, is, is a portable hardware independent representation for machine code. Um, it was originally developed for the web, but it was intentionally designed with a much broader range of applications in mind and has been since adopted in quite a few other domains, which I don't want to go into here. Um, some of its features, like its meta level features are that it has like a fully deterministic and a fully sandbox execution model. It also has a specification that is um, mathematically formalized and has been machine verified for correctness and soundness. So it provides a very high level of assurance, which is like a perfect match for the internet computer and the kinds of apps we envision running on it in the future. Um, at the same time, it provides almost all the expressiveness of, of actual hardware um, and with this release, we take advantage of that. Uh, with this release of Metoko, we take advantage of that in one additional sense that we are kind of like the first blockchain based platform that can actually support floating point uh, uh, types and operations in our language. That's just one example of how that benefits us. Um, Dom already introduced you to the basic concepts of the internet computer. Um, so an app materializes as a canister, as a so-called canister on the internet computer. And a canister now is simply represented as a WebAssembly module, a module of a certain shape that you upload to the internet computer. Um, where this module is instantiated, meaning that it's brought to life uh, along with the, the state, the memory state it encapsulates. Um, and this state will persist on the IC on the internet computer. So for an application, there's no need to explicitly save any data between invocations. Um, and once you have installed uh, a, a canister, like you can have a web front end that calls into it through some HTTP, uh, HTTP endpoints. Uh, at the same time, canisters can also communicate with each other. So there can be communication among different canisters through an asynchronous messaging mechanism. And I'm gonna get back to that a, a little bit later. Um, so one of the advantages of using WebAssembly is that in principle, any language can compile to WebAssembly. So our vision really is that you can program the internet computer in any language of your liking. And to support that vision, uh, further, we have also defined um, a language agnostic interface definition language that we named Candid, and that allows applications, so canisters, to specify their interface such that canisters developed in completely different or unrelated languages can communicate with each other in a seamless manner. Um, having said that, WebAssembly is still a rather young technology, so there are only very few mature language implementations available at this point. One of them is Rust. So we provide uh, support for building canisters and apps on the internet computer in Rust out of the box. Um, but Rust is a very low level language. So from our point of view, it's not ideal for most of the use cases um, that we have in mind for the uh, internet computer. And that's why, um, despite all the risks of creating yet another programming language, uh, we designed uh, Motoko, which is our own uh, brand of a programming language. And whose intention, the intention there is to showcase our vision of what a nice programming environment for the internet computer would look like. Um, and for that, we wanted a, a language that uh, looks familiar and is easy to use to like programmers that are familiar with mainstream programming technologies. Um, but at the same time, we also wanted to be safe and avoid uh, help avoiding unnecessary bugs in, in programs. Uh, but most importantly, the, 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 the primary goal is to have it expose the concepts that the internet computer platform has in the most seamless manner. So concepts like canisters, uh, asynchronous messaging, 
persistence, upgrading of canisters, but also in the future, things like token economics, which are not there yet, but will have to be eventually. So in order to meet these design goals, um, in order to look familiar to programmers, uh, we chose to make Motoko look like a lot like Java or JavaScript uh, languages you're familiar with. So with curly braces, semicolons and all that stuff, you probably have seen a lot. But this is really just a, a superficial skin in a way. Um, under the hood, we try to take in uh, many of the lessons that have been learned in, in more than six decades of history of programming languages and research on them. And, and try to avoid many of the popular mistakes you tend to see in mainstream languages. Um, so in, in Motoko incorporates many features of, of modern programming languages like flexible and a provably sound type system, uh, freedom from problems like null pointer exceptions, so Tony Hoare's famous billion dollar mistake. Um, number types have built-in overflow protection we have closures, we have uh, rich variant types with pattern matching where the compiler would tell you if you forgot to cover some cases like in a switch statement. And the design generally um, errs on the side of safety and minimizing foot guns for the programmer. Um, but the most visible feature of Motoko is its, it's built-in support uh, for canisters and messaging um, in terms of syntactic constructs directly available to the programmer. Uh, so in Motoko, canisters are expressed as actors. So a canister really is an actor. If you're not familiar with that notion, an actor is a pretty old idea, 40 years old actually. Um, it's more or less like an object. So an actor has understands a set of messages, it encapsulates some state. But the difference is that messages are always asynchronous, so you can only send them one way and you don't get back an, a direct reply. They don't have a result. You can only send back messages the other way. And they are also always atomic, so every actor receives messages in an atomic sequential fashion. And that makes actors a great model for concurrency and distribution. Um, in particular because it automatically prevents a whole class of concurrency uh, bugs that often you often find in software like race conditions cannot happen because everything is atomic and state is encapsulated and also deadlocks cannot happen because execution never actually blocks you always you can only send out messages and then you receive new messages you don't have to wait for a reply before you can receive the next message and as I said, that avoids many of the classical concurrency bugs without the programmer ever needing to, to define any lock or, or similar mechanisms. And that's what actors actually have originally been invented for. Um, and the other important aspect of the Motoko programming model is that it has direct support for persistence, sometimes called orthogonal persistence, meaning that it's sort of transparent to the program that its state just persists across execution. So on the internet computer, the internet computer will just persist an, an actor's, uh, aka a canister state between invocations. So this gives a, a program implemented as a canister the illusion of running forever. And this is pretty great, um, but of course the devil is in the details here and this is a, an approach that has often failed in the past because there is the tricky question of how to deal with software upgrades, right? So you have a running application, but now you need to fix a bug or extend the functionality. You actually need to uh, load new code. And in the latest version of Motoko that we are releasing now, we're supporting that through a, a notion we call stable variables. So in a Motoko program, the programmer can declare a certain set of variables in an actor as stable and thereby he, they commit to these variables not changing their types in incompatible ways in the future. So when the programmer writes a new version of that canister, it still has to use these variables. They can add new ones, but the existing ones they have to, they cannot change in an incompatible way. And because of that, the upgraded canister can then safely inherit the old value that the stable variable has from the old version of the software. 
And the runtime system and the language implementation at the same time ensures that the representation remains compatible even across different versions of a compiler, for example. Yes, so with all that in mind, I want to introduce you to the three demos uh, you're going to see in this section. And these three demos are supposed to showcase some of these ideas I just told you about. So the first demo is going to be by Joachim Breitner. He will show you how to program a canister in Motoko um, uh, with a particular focus on how to upgrade a canister with a new version with existing functionality using stable variables. And after that, Hans Larsen will show you how to write a canister in Rust uh, using his autonomous chess uh, application. And finally, Stanley Jones will give you more technical background about the CanCan demo, the simple video sharing app that you already saw a teaser for earlier. So enjoy!